Well, 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 we meet again. Here we are uh, doing some more MIT App Inventor. This time we're taking a look at the guessing game. Uh, you can see here the shell for the two-player version. We're actually going to make it into the one-player version. Let's take a look at the requirements, see what we have to do here. So level two, we're going to rename our program from the two-player guessing game so that you keep the two-player version intact and also modify it for a one-player game. Add a play computer button. Actually, I'm just going to change it uh, to a play. You know what? Let me just fix that right now. Instead of a, add a play computer button, say change the enter number button to a play computer button. So let's go ahead and do that on our thing. Enter number here. Let's change that to correct number. I think correct number is probably an okay name for it because it's still going to be generating the correct number. Um, but let's change the text here to um, play computer. And you guys could make the text whatever you see fit, whatever makes sense there. And then in the correct number of, in the correct text box, uh, here, instead of the hint enter the correct number, we're going to use the hint enter the number of digits. Now let me explain what we mean by uh, enter the number of digits. So if we go over here to MIT App Inventor. As you can imagine, uh, the more digits you have, the more difficult it's going to be to guess, right? For instance, if I uh, had a random integer from 1 to uh, 10, probably wouldn't take very long at all for the user to guess what that number was, especially if we've configured the higher or lower settings, right? Now, if I were to make this between one and, uh, let's see, one billion, something like that. Is this one billion? What, 10 billion? Uh, let's see, let's put our commas in there. Between one and 10 billion? Now, this would probably be a much harder number to guess, and you better hope that you have the uh, higher or lower uh, configured. Now we could probably get into an interest is interesting discussion and maybe you guys can figure this out too. Is like how many guesses would it take you um, to guess if you had the higher or lower button and you used it strategically? That's a really interesting problem. Um, but anyways, that's kind of an aside from what we're actually doing here. The point is the longer the, the random number is, the harder it's going to be to guess, right? So we want to give our user the ability to put something in here. Let's say they want a two digit number, right? Then it's going to give us a number like 48. They put in a four digit number, it's going to give us a number like 1816, something like that, right? So uh, <clears throat> basically, we want the user to be able to decide how long is the number I'm going to be guessing and um, then go from there. So uh, in fact, this random integer, as great as it is, it's only going to be a part of it because we need more infrastructure in order to be able to generate a number of random length or of, of a specified length. So we're going to keep this here, but we're not going to use it. Now we have a couple variables here. We have a uh, global correct number. We have global player guess. Those came in handy as well. And now we're actually going to um, learn something new. We're going to learn about looping. So if I open my control drawer there, I'm going to pull out an if then, which we're not actually going to use. I'm just going to compare it to this thing right here, which is called a while loop. Now, an if then statement and a while loop are sort of similar in that the if uh, right here is sort of a test, right? So if something is true, then we do whatever is in the block connected to here, right? This one is true, except for it runs for multiple times, right? We do a test. And then if that test is true, we do whatever is in this loop. And then we test again, and then we do it again, and then we test again, and then we do it again, and then we test again. And then we keep going in that cycle until uh, it's no longer, until the test is no longer true. So it's it's similar to this, but this is kind of a single use. This one is multiple use. So let's do that. And let's wrap this in uh, some local variables here. So right here, so initialize local name uh, to, and let's actually add a second variable here. So we have now two variables. One of them we're going to call uh, count. In fact, let's put count down here. And this one is going to be 
number. Okay, so we have number. Uh, actually, let's call this one not number, but let's call this rand number and count. Okay, so now these are local variables. You can see the difference here. We have global variables and we have local variables. Global variables are available everywhere in the app. Generally, that is what you want to use. But in certain situations like this, this could be great um, because, you know, these local variables are isolated into this part right here. They're not universal to the program. So we have a local variable instead of a global variable. You could see like, I'm not going to call rand number. I'm still calling correct number and player guess up here. All right, so we will, uh, let's get going here. So let's initialize our local count to zero. And let's initialize our random number to a blank, let's see, text. Let's actually do a blank string right here. Okay, now we're going to do this. Uh, and you know what? I'm actually wrong. We are going to need one more variable, which is, let's make this one a global one just in case we need it somewhere else. Let's initialize a global num of digits and let's initialize that to zero. Okay. Initialize number of digits to zero. So you can see number of digits is set to zero and count is set to zero. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to use a logical comparison here. And we're going to test to see that while, uh, let's grab some variables. And let's grab another variable here. Okay. So we're going to test that while count is less than, Oops, I might have grabbed the wrong one. Yes, not from the logic drawer. Pardon me, from the math drawer, not from the logic drawer. We're going to grab this one, which allows us to have inequalities. Okay, so while uh, count is less than the uh, number of digits, we're going to do something, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, let's say we have a four-digit number. Our user enters four in the number of digits. We're going to go through four times. We're going to go through this loop four times. So we're going to add one to the count each time. And then when the count is equal to the number of digits, we're going to stop doing this. So, of course, we're going to need one thing in here, which is to set our count equal to, and then let's grab our math, our adding, and we're going to get our count variable again. Let's copy and paste that one count plus and let's go with adding a one on there. So you can kind of see the logic of the loop. Count starts at zero, right? And let's say uh, number of digits we enter in four. Uh, <clears throat> then what we're going to do is we're going to go through this count is zero. Okay, we go through we add one now count is one. Okay, we go through we test it. Oh, one is less than four. We do it again, we get two. We count it again, we go up to three, uh, then we add one more, we get to four. Now we test and we say, okay, count four equals the number of digits, which is four. So we're done with this loop, we exit the loop and we move on to the next direction below that. So that's great. Uh, sounds like we have our loop set up pretty well, but we have no procedure yet for generating a random number. So we're gonna have to take care of that. So let's go and uh, let's actually copy this and we're going to use a similar structure, except not really that similar, uh, where we're going to set count. No, we're going to set correct number, or should we do rand number? Let's do rand number. Let's set rand number to itself plus a random variable. Okay, so let's grab a rand number again here. random number, and let's join to that our finally used block, a random integer from one to 10,000. So, but let's change that from one to nine, and let's change that from one to zero. So what it's gonna do, 
It's going to uh, assign one number. Let's say the first one randomly comes out to be six. Okay. Then it goes through the loop. It picks another number and it attaches. Okay. Now we're going to put a zero next to that. Now we're at 60, right? Then we go through the loop again. Now we pull a four. Now we're at 604. Then we go through the loop again. We pull out another number, right? And uh, we just keep adding on numbers to our random number until we're set. Uh, so once we go through this loop, so this will build us a random number of the correct length, but we still have to do a little bit of a setup to uh, set our random number or to set our count, pardon me, to set our number of digits to put in a, an event handler that will trigger this whole thing and then to eventually kind of export our uh, correct number. So let's do that first. Let's set our correct number to this. Actually, you know what? Pardon me. Let's, uh, we're going to again use this block. All right. And this time we're going to set global correct number equal to right here, except not the count, the random number. There we go. So now global correct number will be set to the random number we just generated. And also we need to do this right here. We need to actually, I will take this right here and we're going to set our player guess, not our player guess, we're going to set our uh, number of digits equal to, instead of the text box, we're gonna do the correct text box. So whatever in the designer block they put right here in the correct text box, we're going to assign that to the number of digits variable then we'll go through our loop, which builds up one at a time. Then we'll set our global correct number to uh, get a random number, to get our random number right there. So I think this will work. We just need uh, an event handler to open it up. And in fact, we have this right here, our correct number button. When we click on that, we're gonna go through this whole procedure. Now it's giving me a warning right here, probably telling me that there is a duplicate ha event handler right here, which is our old one, which would we would just set the correct number to the correct text box dot text. Now this is different since this is the one player version, we don't need to do that anymore. So we're gonna erase that. Do we wanna delete all three of those blocks? We sure do. I suppose we should test this out, but I don't think, I'm actually feeling really confident about it. I think I'm just gonna leave it. You guys can test it in class and let me know if it's not working. Thanks so much for watching the video. Good luck.